I don't know what sort of software you have. I use several different types. I have probably six or seven different embroidery softwares, but the ones that I use the most are Janome's Digitizer. Um, I think it's the MPX one, the, uh, and uh, the other one I use is, but only for photo stitch, is um, Brothers PE Design. I think what I have is version seven. I know they're probably up to like twelve now, but I only use it for photo stitch, so I don't need it for anything else. So I've been able to get along with it. Uh, this is what I'm in PE design right now, and, and I have the hoop set for my largest hoop. Um, you can go in and change your hoop sizes, and this is, this is what my hoop would be. And um, for photo stitch, what you do is you bring in, I use the image wizard, and I bring in a picture, let me see, I think the one I want is on the desktop. Uh, this is the one I, the angle I'm using for the latest embroidery. So I'll bring that in. Now, before, before I start, I want to look at it. Often when you bring it in, it's going to be too small. In which case, you need to make it bigger before you actually go in and do the photo stitch on it. Because photo stitch only likes to sew at the size that it was originally created. It's a lot of little stitches. And if you stretch those stitches out, you're going to get long threads. It will look terrible. And if you push them together to make your picture smaller, after you've, you've made it, those threads will be sewing one on top of another and you get, uh, it'll still take the same amount of time to sew, but you'll get very tiny stitches and uh, you can even break your needle, it'll get so thick. So when it, what you need to do is, as soon as it starts, take a look at your picture and see if it's the size you want. If not, go into a photo editing software and make it the size that will fit your hoop the way you want to. Or you can stretch it at this point and make it this big. But because I happen to want to sew right on top of this, so I want it to be the exact same size. I've used photo editing software and made this angle the size that I wanted. I also, in this process, took out all the background and I put black around where the halo is because I'm going to be putting gold thread on it and I want it to show off. You can see in the dress the, the problem where it was um, the threads were damaged. So at this point, I am going to do the photo stitch and click next. And I'm going to actually use the... Um, Uh, multi it'll make it'll make a background around it and it'll generate the lines around it but you still have to go in because these are going to be very very general see here on the side where it's not quite where you want it to be if you don't want white threads showing there you need to go in all the way around your design and add nodes make it exactly what your design is. And it takes a while. I've already done this. I don't really need to do this again, but I'm doing it to show you. Another, another way I found that could be some cases, save some time is if you're in a photo editing software, you can take that white background and make it an outrageous color like neon purple. And then when your design is finished, just go in and delete. It'll make it'll make the background 
neon purple. It's, make sure it's a color that you don't have in your design. And then just go in and delete the neon purple, and it will take out all of this background and just leave you the threads. I haven't done it that way. A lazy man's way, but I'm a very lazy person. I'm not proud of the fact that I'm lazy. I wish I weren't. It's a problem I have to work with. It's my predominant fault. But I'm doing this. I don't have to do this, but I'm trying to overcome my predominant fault by doing this video show you how I do it. And um, it really doesn't take that long. Once um, you're, you're, you're very, very irregular, this is not that bad. So make sure. All right, so all this out. So, and so now we can go on to the next step. What it will do, it will show you this is what my design is going to be. Fine. Next step. This is what it looks like right now. But now I need to make some changes. First of all, I don't use brother embroidery thread. I use Petler, which is, is a cord. I like it very fine. And I want to. I like to reduce the jump stitches. And let me update that preview, and you'll see. Make some changes. All right. Now, I also, I'm also going to add. I go up to 20 stitches, 20 different colors, just because it gives me a chance to fine tune the colors. A lot of them I will end up deleting. I never sew 20 colors, but I like to start out with 20. And then, so that, because it gives you some subtle differences in coloring that you can then change to suit yourself. So, up with that preview. It doesn't make a great deal of difference. Notice now there's more pinks in it, which is what the angel actually is pinks and greens. And now, I'm going to, for the brightness and contrast, you can change it yourself, or you can select from candidates. I usually select from the candidates, and then maybe adjust and fine-tune it afterwards. This one here in the middle is always the present one. And this is what it would look like, darker. These are lighter. And if you don't like this, you can go with the darker. I think I'm going to go with this one. See how that looks. Don't do it. All right, see now it is lighter. I like the coloring. And now, see how it's changed the contrast a little bit for both? Now I can drop this one and see what that looks like. Uh, too light. Let's try to go one the other direction. I think I actually like that. It brings out more of the green. So I'm going to finish that, but I'm not done. At this point, this is when I take it into the digitizer and finish. The digitizer, I will mix the colors in the skirt so that there's no um, the colors more uniform and it looks more like a skirt and doesn't look like it's been damaged. And I'll also change straight colors. I'll do the gold for the halo. I'll eliminate the whole face except the threads that I'm going to do for the eyes. And so at this point, I will save this, and I'm not going to save it because I've already actually done all this, and 
then um, export it. Now, sometimes it won't let me export it. I'm going to try, but it'll probably tell me. Let's just call it Angel. And I don't want in that folder. Let's put it in general design. Probably won't let me because that's a big angel. That's a lot of stretch. And I just want to put, I just want a big angel. It says it can't be because it's too large. So at this point, I will, I will save it as a uh, yes file, but not in that folder. I wanted to put it in the angel folder. Let's do that. Angel. And then I close this. Then I open DigiType. And I'll bring it into Digitizer. Now, when it comes into Digitizer, it's going to come in sideways because even though the hoop in is up is right side up like this in Digitizer, the actual hoop is sideways. I rotated it that way and told it to save it that way. So, but it always wants to bring it in the way um, the way it thinks the hoop should be. So let's just. Open, open a design. Um, not the angel ones. Yeah. As you can see, I have a lot of designs. Each of those is full of. Take a while to load. So we brought the angel design in. Let me back out so you can see. Um, and this is the way it looks. Um, I'm going to rotate that whole angel just so that it'll be right side up in the hoop. 70 degrees. And I'm going to group it because I hate moving it and have it. Some threads get lost. Okay, so this is what it looks like. Um, I have a true view turned on so you can see actually see the threads. This is sort of what it's going to look like. And actually, it does a pretty good job of showing you. As I say, I need that face to look a lot better. And the way that I do that is I'm going to digitize right on top. But do all this embroidery on top of the picture. So I'm going to actually take out all of that face. And probably the hands as well. And then I'm going to go in and I will, this is a thread told it met my threads, but it really doesn't know what met my threads look like, so I don't think it does. Uh, so I will, what I will do is go in and change each of these two met threads, which are the ones over here on the side. 
Um, let me ungroup that now that I've moved it. And notice that there's some colors that are actually the same that are repeated. And you can actually, there's two of these. One of them is, let me turn off the TV so you can actually see better. One is the shading on the face. The other is shading on the face, the wings, the clothing. So those two could be combined. Unless that shading was something special on the face, in which case I might want to switch it to another color. There's another one of the same color. Um, that's more in the wings and the hair. Now I might change that to something that's more gold. Um, let's say, let's just, just change it to something like this. That's too yellow for me, but um, just to show you. Here's 249. This is the burgundy in the in the in the outfit, but it's also got it in the hair. I don't think I want burgundy in the hair. But so what I would do, but I like all that burgundy in the outfit. Here's the other one that also has it in the hair. So what I would do is come up to here and hide hide colors. And I would hide all the colors except the burgundy. Now, because even though, and I would hi hide all the colors except both burgundies. Are there any other burgundies in there? No. And in which case, this is what I get. And I would take the ones that are in the hair here. And I'm going to just change them for now to something else. Something that's a brown. Let's try this one. Later, I'll change it to something that I actually like, but it'll separate it from the other two burgundies. Now I can combine these two. And combine the other two. And I'm going to show all. All right, all right. and there's two grays here. And again, I want to look at these, both of these. See why there are two different grades, and then just decide which ones I want to keep, which ones I want to make something else. Combine these burgundies. Now there may be a brown in the hair that I actually like that I can combine this with. to dark green, and I'll change that to evergreen, which is the darkest green I use. And I'm going to change both of these to the same one. And then, and then after I have the colors that I want, I'll go in and I'll start adding more embroidery to fill in these spaces where the, the skirt was was messed up. I'll add some of the of the, the pinks and the burgundy to that. I'll go in and add some gold in the wings. I'll add some of the darker colors to try to bring out more of the green in the coat in the in the cloak. Here and I'll then I'll digitize the, the halo too. So that's what I what I do generally. The steps that I go through, I do the if I'm doing photo stitch at all, I do it in um, digit um, design and then I bring it over into digitizer. I'm very comfortable with digitizer. I know all the I know all the the bells and whistles. I don't. Uh, the only, as I say, the only thing I use in PE design is the photo stitch. So I'm not as familiar with it, and it would take me a lot longer. And I'm it's just another piece of software I don't want to learn. Now, 
underneath this angel, I would put my other angel. Now, and that's one of the first things I need to do is bring it in to make sure that both of them are the same size. Because if it's not the same size, I have to make it the same size. Um, it was called Angel Skin. Now here's here it's underneath it. Let me get it close. All right, I'm going to move that down a little bit. Should be exactly the same size. The one one good way to check that is to just leave hide all the colors except perhaps one. I'm going to hide all the colors except let's see. Let's hide everything except the green. So they are the they are the same size. I think I see it. I move it. You'll see the you can see the green threads there. That's all that's left of it. All right, let me move it back. Um, let me let me unhide a few other colors so you can actually see. Um, Let's let's keep and hide everything except the black. All right. So you can see the it in the halo. You can see it you can see it here on uh, underneath the wings in the clothing. And it looks like everything is where it's supposed to be. And that's important. Because one of the very first things that I do is I put, I digitize um, a sewing line all the way around the angel. Because what's going to happen is I'm going to, I'm going to print off this angel. And I, then I need to sew it down as an applique in the hoop that I can embroider on top of it. And one of the first things I would do would be erase all of those threads that are in the face. Notice it did leave some black lines. Those I would keep. Um, let me see if I can find the angel that I actually did. This is a very big program, and it takes a while to load things. All right. Um, would you like to list them in the order that I've worked on them? And so it should be. See if I can find it. Just because I know where I save it. It should be in there. Yeah. It is Angel Eye Chest.
load, load, load. I know you can do all of this in PE Design. I'm, I'm not that familiar with that program. I'm used to, I've been using, I've been using digitizer since before PE Design even existed. And back then it was called Scan and Sew. And the largest hip you could make was about three by three inches. This is what the finished design, when, the, when I actually finished it, this is what it looks like. I added these vines and leaves around it to match up with other vines and leaves which will be going above and below it. Um, and as you'll notice, I'm still not finished. How many threads do I have in it now? Colors. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Eleven. Still loading, that's why it's being so slow here. Well, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. All right, but not all of those 20. Not all of them um, are actually part of the design. By that I mean, if you were to look, I should have just finished with loading. The very first one, the dark purple one, you should have to use this without that color. You find everything except the orange one. This, this is the actually only the threads for the orange one. Those are what I call keys. They mark where the the, net, the other design is going to meet this. This is probably the first design I'm going to sew, and so, but if I had so if I end up sewing the top one first. Those keys will let me make sure that I have this angel lined up correctly because I won't sew these. I will simply let use let the the needle um, go along and mark it. I won't put thread through the needle, but I'll have it sew it so that it, I can see exactly where um, those those marks are. And the same is with the next one. Um, let's see the next one. Five colors. Let's let's not let's see the purple one. All right, I'm going to turn off this angel background. I want that one. I want I want the background turned off. See this black line? That's the first thing I, first thing that's going to get sewn. What it is is, it's, I, I'm going to have this hoop with the fabric in it, and I'm going to sew this black line. Then I'm going to come back and I'm going to put the 
I will have the angel cut out of fabric because I will have this printed on fabric. And I will position the angel right where that black line is so I know exactly where in the hoop that angel has to be. And I will spray the back of that angel with um, adhesive spray, the kind quilters use. I won't take the paper off of it. I leave the paper on because taking the paper off and then putting down sometimes distorts it. So I leave the paper on and I'll put it right down inside that black line. Then it's going to sew the first stitches. And the first stitches that always get sewn, these black ones, these are going to be the eyes and the nose and the mouth. Because those I have to make sure are exactly where they're supposed to be. If I waited till the very end when I sew the rest of the black stitches, by then there might be some distortion and they won't line up right. So I always like to sew anything on the face that has to be sewn first. And after that's sewn, then it will then it will start sewing other things again right on top of the angel. So if anything from the background shows, it will be the right color. It will match. Um, the hands won't get sewn. The face won't get sewn. And that's how I work with something like this. The, um, I do another Matthew and Heart Mary and the Sacred Heart that I do the same thing. I digitize right, I print off their face and digitize right on top of it. And then when I go to make those appliques, I sew those printed faces down in the hoop and then the rest of the embroidery, all the rest of the body and everything else gets done on top of it. So, okay. Let's see how this works. Now, that's using, as again, using a cheesy design photo stitch. Now, if you look up here, you'll see that the leaves are not done with photo stitch. They're regularly digitized. The only time I reuse photo stitch is for something like this, where you have usually a person, a face, something that, something that's so, so complicated that you have to have the, the colors blend. The leaves... I can manually digitize those, and I'll show you how to do that in another video. Okay, turn this off. 